What do bra cups, fakes, and armor have in common? You can find them all in our textile conservation lab. Come join us. In textile conservation, we preserve, analyze, and treat textiles. Unlike art that has static forms, textiles and costumes don't have a fixed shape and can be damaged if not handled safely or mounted with the right support. Here are a few things our textile conservation lab does in an ordinary week. A major part of our work is preparing textiles for exhibition. Fashioning Identity, Mola Textiles of Panama, features more than 40 molas made by the Guna peoples of Panama. For this exhibition, creative mounting solutions were key. Flat molas dissociated from a blouse were pinned to an archival fabric-covered board with special stainless steel pins so they could be displayed on the wall. For the blouses, we devised two different mounts. One consisted of an inert material called ethafoam that is easily carved to shape. We created custom-sized forms for each blouse, covered them with neutral fabric, and then dressed the blouses. Three mola blouses are atypical. The mola panel on the front is different from the mola on the back. For these, we want visitors to see both sides, so we displayed them in the center of the gallery on mannequin forms created using phosphate, a material made from heat-sensitive polyester. When we apply heat and steam to phosphate, it shrinks around the form it is laid on and hardens. We then peel it from the form and add an internal armature for support. Conservators must understand materials to determine a textile's authenticity and context. This carpet fragment was acquired by the museum in 1988, but we can trace its history of ownership, or provenance, to 1928. Some believe this fragment to be the earliest known Persian silk knotted pile carpet from the 15th century, while others believe it to be a recent creation. To answer that dating question, I collaborated with conservation scientists at the Indianapolis Museum of Art to analyze the red, blue, and yellow dyes. Because that analysis revealed the yellow and red to be synthetic dyes not available until 1879 or 1884, we were able to definitively prove that the fragment was a late 19th or early 20th century creation. Even though it's not a 15th century Persian textile, it still has a unique story and value for us. An important goal for CMA conservation is to train the next generation of conservators. This set of Chinese ceremonial armor from the late 19th or early 20th century was a unique intern project. The first step was to write reports and document the armor prior to treatment, which involves stabilizing the deteriorating velvet and compensating for areas where it has degraded. Examining the armor through a microscope helps us understand the materials and their degradation. Again, we chose Fosshape to create a custom archival mannequin for this complex and heavy object. The work of our textile conservation lab echoes the CMA's collection overall, with textiles spanning all cultures and time periods. There is never a dull moment as we examine, treat, and prepare the world's textiles.